Hi everybody, this is stuff I wish I could remember. Basically it's a video for me to work out what I did while I was learning something and uh, I wanted to remember it so I thought if I'm recording it for me I'll record it for everybody. Hopefully it's useful. So today I'm actually doing a little demo with LiveLink Face which is a iPhone app that records your face and uh, brings the data into Unreal Engine. Uh, now I'm going to do this with a very poor character that I just whipped up which I'm going to import into the level here. Now this is a character I previously built and rigged with all the blend shapes or the morph targets in Blender and a simple bone uh, rig. Now when you import make sure the morph targets are toggled is active and then when the character comes in you'll see that there's my great digital puppet <laughs> for what it's worth um, in the scene. So it's brought in the dog mesh, a dog skeleton and you can just sort of dump it into the uh, scene like that, ready to go. I always forget all the steps and I don't actually understand all the steps here. So what I'm really doing is just trying to uh, put this somewhere so that next time I want to do this with a, a better character, I'll know what to do. Now this dog needs some animation. So I'm going to go to the animation menu there after right clicking and create an animation blueprint. Select the dog skeleton and there they are there together so I can put dog animation blueprint right so that's going to control the skeleton and the morph targets if I open it up all I have to do to get um, this working you can see the skeleton there and all the blend shapes here right they've all loaded incorrectly they've got the correct naming convention so if I go over to the animation blueprint and just drag off this node here and then put live link pose in here if I have it running correctly on my iPhone and my face is in the frame and uh, gawking and making faces all I have to do is select the iPhone here and then hit compile to compile and save this uh, flow this blueprint and there you can see it's mirroring the kind of the faces I was making at the time now that also needs to be linked up in the event graph so I can drag out the other way here and say evaluate live link frame there and then again select the iPhone and then make sure that's on basic and compile that and now that's all good to go. Now one of the things I quite often like to do well, not that I've done this very often, but what I like to try here is to go into Modify Curve and what I'm going to do is I'm going to exaggerate one of the mouth shapes or the face shapes, which will be the mouth open. So if I put that there and then making sure to um, go down the bottom, you can add a curve pin and here's all the things I'm driving or could be. And I'm going to find Draw Open and put that on a bigger number, like two. And make sure over here that is set to scale. Yeah, <laughs> set it to scale. So now when you recompile it, that's going to open the mouth two times wider. It's going to overdrive that shape. And you can do it for any number of these. You can just have jaw, anything that's not working enough or too much. You can scale up or down with that number there, as you can see. But remember, you do have to compile every time you make a change hit that green little button. So there you go, I like that mouth a little more than what it was giving me. LiveLink also records your head's rotation um, and pitch. So what I'm going to do is try and expose that and, and put it to um, and assign it to one of the bones of my character. So I'll make a get property value in the event graph and there I'm going to have to set the name of the thing I want to address. So you can see here you, all the things that it actually um, is, all the data, all the names of the data it's throwing out. So by making, uh, typing in head your, head roll, and um, head pitch, copy and paste this three times and have those three things in that uh, little property name there, I can access each of those things and then assign those. Uh, integers or that data to a bone. So I'll connect them up like that and then over here 
I'm going to have to make a rotator. Now that's a variable. So down here, I'll call this neck rotator or rotation and make sure that Boolean is set to a rotator. Right, so that's a variable I want to have access to. So I'm going to put it out here, drag it off, drop it there, and I'm going to set the rotation. So the whole point of this is to take the data from that bone and set it into that variable. Now, the data coming out is not mapped correctly to rotate the bone. So I'm going to make a rotator first, connect that up. And now I need to put the data between these points, but I need to remap what that data is. But I need to remap. In order to do that, I do a map range, or in order to map range that clamped, I do a map and I'll pop it in between there. And I'm going to change the values. So minus one and one get remapped to minus 90 and 90. Right, so that's taking the minus one to one of the face uh, data output and remapping it to um, 90 minus 90 for a bone rotation. So once I have those all hooked up, the next thing to do is to hook those up into there and then compile. And that should now be driving the bone. First, I need to make a sequence, which I pop up the top. And then I take the data from the evaluate live link frame and I throw it all the way over into the set and so all that is going to combine now and I should be able to move my head around and the dog's neck should move as well. Oh, not quite. <laughs> See, this is why I do these things so I can remember. I have to go into the animation um, graph and I need to actually transform the bone. <laughs> it doesn't help if the animation graph's not transforming the bone. So I'll pop that into there. It automatically builds this local to component and then it'll build component to local. Now I have to tell the transform modify bone what bone I want to rotate. So over here after selecting it I can select neck and then go to the rotation tab, very important and set the rotation mode to replace. I'm going to replace everything that's there and I'm going to leave it in the bone space. Now, where do I get that rotation? From down here in the variables. I get the neck rotation and I pump it into there, into that rotation um, input. And now when I compile, you can see that my head is controlling the neck of the dog. Now, if you're like me, these things aren't hooked up right. So head your head pitch and head roll are going into X, Y, and Z and probably the wrong way around for how I set it up on my character. So what I tend to do is break these rules, break these links by right clicking on them, putting one in, compile. Is this doing the right thing? It was. Now I put this one in, is that doing the right thing? Yes, but it was back to front, so I'll just make this negative 90 a positive 90, and this positive 90 a negative 90, and that'll invert the roll. So now that's doing the right thing. And then all I have to do is hook up the last one, and now compile, and now this is perfectly matching my head uh, movement. Doesn't take long to get that right. Now that that's saved, I can go back to the viewport and stick the doggo skeleton there. And then over on the right, I have to find the anim class and set that to my doggo animation blueprint. And then if I go all the way down to skeletal at the bottom and select update animation in editor, I get a live view in the editor. So that's the same as what I was seeing in the viewport on the animation blueprint, but just actually in scene. So I can do some live performance with that. Now I really want my little doggo's ears to jiggle, so I'm going to go to the physics, create a physics asset, and add the doggo skeleton to that, and call it something I can remember. Now when you save that, open it up, create a bone for, create a body for all bones, and that's um, so that no little bones get skipped and they all get this um, envelope generated. So setting up physics is as easy as selecting the bones you want to jiggle. Now I haven't got into collisions or anything yet, that's beyond my pay grade just yet. Right click, 
physics type set to simulated and then we save that and then we are good to go Oop, just have to save the whole project <laughs> save all okay now we can close down that physics now nothing's happening yet because we need to tell the animation blueprint uh, the anim graph to recognize those physical bones so because it's going to create another component to local local to component I'm just going to build a rigid body and stick it straight after transform modify bone in between here and just hook that up now that's not going to work straight away you have to drag off the external force and select promote to variable I don't know why but that's what you do now if you compile you can see that my ears are floppy now like I said I haven't played with springiness or gravity or anything just yet or even uh, self collision that's all going to be next in my little journey but at least here you can see I have a head that I can move around jiggly ears and it's uh, copying my motions so thanks I hope that was useful um, again it's just uh, something I'm doing for me <laughs> thanks for coming along bye